Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, it's What Makes This Song Great, Episode 21. The band is Stone Temple Pilots and the song is Vaseline. One of the reasons I chose this song is that it uses third-related or mediant-related modulations which is common to the grunge era that you rarely hear anymore. And the reason it was common to the grunge era is that Kurt Cobain used it a lot on Nevermind and In Utero. When I say a lot, he used it in the songs In Bloom and Territorial Pissings. And he also used it in Heart Shaped Box from In Utero. And this tune is really a great example of it as well. Let's check it out. Starts with these guitars that fade in. Then, then you have this bent bass note there on B flat. And then, we get to the main riff of the tune. Now the main riff of the tune is just two notes. It's just F to G. So that's really the verse riff there. So it does this B flat major 13 with a sharp 11 uh, as the intro chord, and they use it later on in the bridge. This is how you know that Dean DeLeo is really influenced by jazz. He uses chords like that that really only jazz players use. And I'll tell you a little interesting story. I went to see SDP play back in the, in the 90s here in Atlanta, and he went into a guitar solo in one of his songs, and he played the entire beginning of the Alan Holdsworth solo to In the Dead of Night over one of the STP tunes. He played there. He played that entire intro of that solo, and I remember thinking, he's playing Alan Holdsworth there. So you have this gradual swelling up of that B flat major seven sharp 11 chord. And then you're into the verse. Then there's this bend. One time a thing occurred to me, what's real and what's for sale? Okay, so it starts here on G. It's really G Mixolydian is actually the verse melody. Up. up to the B flat, which is the fifth of the E flat major chord that it goes to next. So the verse is simply, but you have this going over it, which is really cool. This drum groove, check it out. That little snare drag there is really incredibly great on this. There's a couple real subtle things in this drum part, aside from the fact that it sounds phenomenal. The kick drum is massively big. I mean, listen to it. This is a Brendan O'Brien production, Nick DiDia engineering, and it's just incredible. <laughs> Let's do it with the bass together. This is Robert DeLeo. Check out how aggressive this bass tone is. That's a really grungy you know, Ampeg amp. Sounds like just a Fender P bass or something. It's very aggressively played and it just has this growl, growling tone to it. And But put together with the drums, it's really... That is really smoking. Okay, so then we get to... One time a thing occurred to me, what's real? During the verse, we also have this going on. By the way that rings together, 
It sounds like it's an open G tuning to me because it just ha has that really um, open sound, like it's the open strings. I'm not playing the lower high string, I'm just playing the inner strings. Listen to it again. That's in there with this. Now, when it modulates up to E flat from G. His melody uh, moves from A on the G chord up to the to the fifth of the E flat chord. Check out the melody on the E flat chord. The end of the verse goes from the ninth up to the fifth of the E flat chord, and then it goes it goes from the root of the E flat to the major seventh, then to the the ninth, and then to the third of C major, and that's going before between the third E D E third to the second to the third. Uh, da, 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 da. Then it goes back to the sus4 to the third of the G chord there. You may say, well, I'm only hearing the power chords there. Those aren't even complete chords. If you actually listen really closely, those thirds are in there. They may just be the overtone happening, but I th but they sound like they're in there to me. <laughs> So you've got this third related modulation from G to E flat to C, which has an inherent line cliche, meaning a half step linear movement, chromatic movement. You've got the fifth of the G major chord, which moves up to the root of the E flat major chord, which moves up to the third of the C major chord. Fifth root. On a production level, the verse vocals are single, meaning one voice, and then when it gets to the chorus, they go, they are doubled. And then when it gets to the chorus, they're doubled. Check it out. Flies in the Vaseline we are, sometimes it blows my mind, keep getting stuck here all the time. And then to the double. Isn't you, isn't me, search for things that you can't see. One of the big reasons, not just that the Beatles and every other group has done this since the beginning of rock music, but it also helps the vocals cut through the mix when they're doubled. Next up, we have the bridge. You'll see the and you'll see the Goes back to the intro, B flat major 13 with a sharp 11. And the melody where it goes root third root ninth of the da 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 it goes down to the 13 da. the melody on this last phrase of the bridge is really cool that's a great example of a lydian melody here on the last phrase of the bridge so it goes it goes root third root 13 Da, 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 da. Then it goes up to the third, fifth, and then it, the melody goes da, to the sharp 11, which is really powerful. It's a perfect example of a Lydian melody. So it's using this B flat Lydian scale for the bridge melody. Okay, the solo's next. Check it out. Now it sounds like in that first part, I'm going to solo it. Check this out here. Right. It's a very Jimmy Page-esque lick. It's almost like a heartbreaker. Very hard to get that. And then the next phrase. Uh, 
basically it does the same thing. The third phrase is pretty much the same as the first phrase. And then we're back into the verse part. Okay, this is actually the most important part of this video. And it's actually the most important part of how music used to be recorded. You see, this is not done to a grid. This has not been quantized or anything. This was all done on tape. And how do you know that? Because you can tell at the end of every chorus, there's a slight pause, which gives the tune feel. Check it out. Right there. That new section is slightly delayed. Listen to it again. So that hit is paused. Every time that it happens in the song, it does the same thing. Like here at the end. It's so obvious. That happens in all these old songs. If you listen to Smells Like Teen Spirit, check it out. You'll hear it. It's always slightly laid back. That's what gives the song that forward momentum. That's what makes human beings sound like human beings and gives things feel. And then we're back to the out chorus, which goes on the riff, I think, eight times. And then it goes to that B flat leading chord. <laughs> That B flat major 7, 13 sharp 11. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, you can go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Thanks for watching.